Welcome to Power Wet, uh, brought to you by Power and Praise Ministries. My name is Reverend Dr. Abel Dube, the lead pastor of Power and Praise Ministries. I'm going to share the word of God with you this day. Uh, our reading comes from the book of John 4. Uh, let's read from verse 5 to verse 10. The Bible reads on the New King James Version, So he came to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of the ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, set thus by far the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Then the woman of Samaria said to him, how is it that you, being a Jew, ask a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is it who says to you, Give me a drink, you will have asked him, and he will have given you living waters. I want to speak to you on a subject uh, uh, called serendipity. Serendipity is an occurrence and development of events by chance in a happy or beneficial way. Or another way is finding value, value, valuable things not sought for. Uh, in a short nutshell, it's, it's God's unexpected blessings. I'll call it serendipity. Now, in this scripture, in this text here, we come across a woman at the well. Now, the woman's life was a question mark. By her own account, she had already had five husbands, and the husband she was having at that moment was not even married to her. She had not even been married to her. And she was not, it was not even sure whether she's going to get married or not. Five unsuccessful marriages. Imagine the type of stories around this woman. Everybody was talking about her. She had lost reputation. She has lost her integrity. Now, she appears in the text in this Bible now with another man. The five she had, everybody knew. But later, when she appears in the Bible, she had this one, who is the sixth man, who she is not even married to. Whether she was preparing to get married, that was uh, uh, going to be proven later. Now, what we see her come doing, we see her coming to come and fetch water. She's coming to fetch water, she's minding her own business, she's not concerned about who is saying what about her, but she's going to fetch water. That's what the text says. Something unusual happens to this woman on her journey to fetch water. Very unusual happens to her. She had come with her own agenda, going to fetch water for her family or for herself. Now, this is a woman who is known to have a dubious character by her community, by the whole of Samaria. Now, the reason why she was going to fetch water in the noon, the Bible describes that she was fetching, she came to the well in the noon. Maybe it's because because the, the history of the Jewish women, they fetch water in the morning. And this one was now fetching water in the noon. It means everyone yet discarded her. Everybody had put a take on her that this is not the rightful woman to spend time with other women. This is not the rightful woman to spend time with married women. This is not the rightful woman to spend time with unmarried women. So she came in the noon on her own to fetch water. Because she had a deformed reputation. When she goes there, not expecting to be used by God, she meets up a man right at the well. When she meets up at that man at the well, she's not bothered about men because let me tell you, this woman, when she arrives in that well, uh, 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 she sees the men sitting there. She's not moved by men because she's already had five of them already. And uh, she had already won the sixth one. Now, probably she's thinking, what is this man doing here? Now, when Jesus begins to speak to her, 
and says, woman, give me water to drink. I can imagine what was going on in her mind. Maybe this man is throwing a line on me. Maybe this man is trying to propose me. I've had enough of men. Men are toxic. That's what she was thinking. I will never trust men because I've had already five of them and they've left me. Jesus asked for water. Then she says, there are no dealings between the Samaritan and the Jews, which was really not true because she was trying to use words and means like many of us many times we give excuses because of the failures or things that have gone in our lives uh, when somebody is coming with a, a rightful direction or trying to advise you rightfully you, you always cut them out and you always close them in now she's used of being proposed she's used of that but she didn't understand that this man is asking for something deeper than what she, he was asking for she just gave an answer of there are no dealings between the Jewish and the Samaritans. In short, she was saying, don't bother me. I don't need to be bothered. But Jesus began to say something to her. He says, woman, if you knew who was asking for water, you will ask for water from me because I don't just have normal water. I've got waters of life. So he quickly summarized to her and gave her a rightful uh, 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 projection of an answer. But something happened to this woman. This woman stopped dismissing Jesus when he said, I'm a different man who has the living waters. All the other men that we have been having have just been there to be men. But I am a different kind of a man. And the waters that I have are called living waters. Now, the moment Jesus spoke to that, this woman did something spiritual. She gave closer attention now to Jesus. Because she realized this is a different man these words are different than what I've been hearing all along. They are talking about life. Jesus Christ says, Woman, the time has come when true worshippers shall not worship, only, only worship uh, in truth, but they shall, only, they shall worship in truth and in spirit because the Father is seeking for such who can worship him. Then a perception of that woman changed. That made her feel Jesus was a spiritual man. Because Jesus was already now speaking spiritual matters. Jesus moved from the normal circumstances, from the fleshly things, from the worldly things of normal water, into heavenly things. And this woman could pick it up in the spirit. Remember, this is a woman who had a bad reputation, woman who had not known about Jesus Christ, woman who had not even given a life to follow Jesus Christ. But... In her misery, she could pick up things of the Spirit. Her perception changed. That made her feel Jesus is a spiritual man. She began to ask spiritual questions. She says, I know the Messiah will come. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus says, no, 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 woman. I am the Messiah. I am the one that you have been waiting for. I am the long-waited Messiah. I have come. This woman went to fetch water. Remember the text. But on her way to fetch water, something unusual happened to her. An expected blessing came to her. She had not gone to look for Jesus. She had not gone to look to be used by God. She had just gone to fetch for water. And an unusual blessing came to her. That is what I call serendipity. Long-awaited Messiah right there at the doorstep of that woman. She puts her bucket down. When she hears this is the Messiah, she runs into her city in Samaria. And when she runs into the city of Samaria, she's got one thing in mind. I, I've seen God. I've seen the same Jesus. This man told me everything that I've ever done in my life. And then she says, come see a man. Come see a real man. Now, this woman went there to fetch water, 
but she met a real man, a different kind of man, a man who had a better reputation, a man who had so much experience about life. This woman had so much experience with men, but she met up a man who had so much experience with life, and serendipity came. She never thought ever, any day she would be, ever be used by God. But look at this woman, worn out woman, analyzed by the community as a worn out, useless woman, somebody who can never be used by anybody, somebody who cannot be related to, somebody who cannot even have friends, but in her misery, an unexpected blessing comes. She meets up with Jesus and the shift turns around. She runs into the community. She runs into Samaria. She says, come see a man who told me everything. Glory to God. She says, come see a man who told me everything. She was very persuasive when she arrived in Samaria. You know why she was persuasive? Because let me tell you something. Everybody knew about her, especially men. They knew about her. So everybody was always aiming at going to hit on her. But when she came there, God used that negativity to draw Samaria back to God. That woman became an influencer. She used to be an influencer of bad motives, but this time she became an influencer of people knowing God. She became an influencer in the whole of community. The whole Samaria knew about Jesus Christ because of that woman. That woman who had received an unexpected blessing. She got the whole village to follow Jesus Christ. Amen. This woman herself, she found Jesus in a vulnerable moment. She was not even looking for Jesus, but she found Jesus. She was the first person to really have revelation about who Jesus is. She was the first person in the whole village to know more about Jesus Christ and to convince the whole village. She was actually used as an evangelist by God. To, to evangelize the whole of Samaria. God is able to make us to find things in places where we are not looking for them. That is called serendipity. We find Jesus in places we do not plan to find him. God is able to use the seemingly unusable. This woman seemed like nobody can use her in anything. You might be sitting there also looking miserable in your house. Maybe you followed Jesus before. Maybe you have never known Jesus and you think, nobody, Jesus cannot use me. God cannot use me. Let me tell you something. God is looking for that opportunity, that moment. God wants to bring an unexpected blessing into your doorstep, into your household, in that company which you are working for. God wants to use you to bring people to salvation. God wants to use you to bring people to the light of God. Don't ever write, rule yourself out. Don't write yourself out. Because David says in the word of God, says, I sought for the Lord and the Lord found me. It's not you who finds the Lord. It's him who finds you. Just channel your heart to be right with God and God will look for that. you find that heart. That's why he says, the Lord is looking for worshipers who will worship him in truth and in spirit because he's seeking for such who can worship him. God is seeking. He is in the business of seeking. He's seeking for people. He's seeking for men and women. He's seeking for boys and girls. He's seeking for elderly people. He's seeking for young people who he can use. But your heart has to be right. Your heart, go fetch. And when you are going to fetch, you will find God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, we may not receive everything we pray for, but there are always unexpected things that we get from God. Now, in this season, which we're in right now, you might think maybe, what's going, to up, up, uh, what's going to happen with me? What's going to happen with my children? What's going to happen with my job? What's going to happen with my life? Don't worry. God is in control. Have a heart of expectation. Expect an unexpected blessing. God can drop a blessing which you are not looking for. Right now, when you switch on the news, 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 whether it's international or local news, you hear that jobs are being uh, 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 shelved, uh, uh, people are being retrained. Don't think of the West. Always think of the serendipity. 
and say, God will see me through. Now, that is called unexpected things. We'll give God the praise as you give God the praise. God himself knows how to bring greater things to you. God is a big God. Now, this woman here, we hear about her from Samaria. Was known by the world as a bad woman. But now, she's documented in the Bible as one of the women who changed situation around. Who brought salvation to Samaria. I don't know. You are all over the place. You are wondering, am I a good believer? Am I not a believer? But let me tell you, God is a God who knows how to shift you to the rightful position and rightful place. Samaritan woman. We see in the Bible that later, the apostles were sent to Samaria. And when they went to Samaria, they preached the gospel. And a deacon went there to preach the gospel. And then when, you, when the people came again to, to Jesus Christ, the reason why many people came to Jesus when the deacon was preaching, it was because of that woman who had planted a seed in Samaria. That woman had planted a great seed. And God can use you to plant a great seed into your family. To plant a great seed into your community. To plant a great seed wherever you are. That is called serendipity. Nobody believed or trusted that woman. But finally, everybody believed and trusted the woman. Because of the man that she had met. Today, I want you to believe. Because Jesus is the man we are talking about. Many of us. We are sitting in our homes, we are sitting in our churches, we are sitting in our comfort of our homes, and we are looking for men. We are looking for men. When I talk about men, I'm talking about men of God, we are talking about women of God, we are talking about, but there is a man who is behind the man. His name is Jesus Christ. If you find that man, let me tell you something, unexpected blessings will come. Jesus is the center of everything. Right now, he is the hope, he is our hope. Somebody will say, Pastor, what should we practice now? Should we have hope or should we have faith? Have faith in God and have hope for the future. Don't have hope for God, but have faith in God. And as you have faith in God, know that He is waiting for you. He is waiting to turn situation around. He is waiting to turn things around for your good. And when He turns things around for your good, you shall testify. You, that woman has lived for ages to come as a testimony of Samaria. You can be a testimony in your community. You can be a testimony in your nation. You can be a testimony wherever you are. In your workplace, in your school, in your household, in your family, you can be a testimony. Even many of us who are watching right now, you might not be considered as anything in your family. As family members, somebody dies in the family, you are the last one to be told. There is somebody who is getting married, you are the last one to be invited. There is somebody who is, who is having a bad day, they forget about you. They meet you somewhere and say, oh, we forgot to tell you. But let me tell you something, men can forget you, but God has not forgotten about you. Have trust in God. And when you trust in God, go there and go to God. And when God, uh, 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 when you meet up with God, how do you meet up with God? By the preaching of the word, as I'm preaching to you, God is, is meeting, meeting up with you. And when he meet up with you, take the word. That woman gave closer attention to what Jesus was saying. So every time a message is preached, give closer attention of the content and the context of the message. It's not about the excitement of the message, but it's about the context of the message. What is God saying to me? And today God is saying, there is an unexpected blessing for you. As there is an unexpected blessing for you, you just need to put your heart right. And when you put your heart right, ask spiritual questions. And that woman began to ask spiritual questions and she got spiritual answers. That's why God used her for the spiritual matters. If that woman had ignored God, she could have just collected her water, gone back to the village and gotten to her sixth man. And by the time she, 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 she died, she could have been with 20 men. But look at it. Her destiny changed shifted when she met a man. You can meet a man today. His name is Jesus Christ. 
Jesus Christ is the Savior. He came down here on earth and the main purpose why he came down on earth was to live and to die for you. And not only to die for you, but to rise from the dead. But the death of Jesus Christ engrafted you so that you yourself can become beneficial of an God's unexpected blessing. The first blessing that you need is the blessing of salvation. The blessing of accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And when you accept him as your Lord and Savior in your heart, God is able to change your life. As he changed the life of this Samaritan woman, today God can change your life today. It might look like nothing will happen, but let me tell you something. When that woman left her house, she did not know that her destiny will change when she meet up with Jesus Christ. When she meet up with Jesus Christ, immediately she ran and she witnessed to the whole community and the whole community came to Jesus. You can meet, him, meet up with Jesus today. And when you meet up with Jesus and confess your sins unto Jesus Christ and ask him to forgive you and ask him to wash you, wash you with his blood and forgive you all your sins and, and, and accept you as, 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 as a child of God and you accept him as your Lord and Savior. Today, today, at this rightful moment, your life will change. And when your life has changed, things will become better. Things will come better. You'll begin to go bigger. You'll begin to go greater in your life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you today and say, Jesus Christ is the only answer to the world. He's the only answer to our lives. When you accept him, you have not made a bad choice. You have made one of the biggest choices that you can ever make. That is the first blessing that you can get of serendipity. The second blessing of serendipity is an unexpected blessing. God is able to give you good health, good health, good life. God is able to give you a good job. God is able to give you all things that you desire in life. God is able to give you a marriage. God is able to give you a family. God is able to give you uh, 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 a good business. God is able to give you even money. God is able to give you things of this, of this life. That is unexpected blessings. And because of that, because of accepting him first, the principle, you accept Jesus Christ first, this woman met Jesus before she got a blessing. So you meet Jesus, you meet him by confessing your sins and asking for forgiveness. And when he forgives you, he changes your life. I want us right now, as you are watching me right now, uh, uh, if you are feeling you want Jesus Christ in your life, you, 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 are, you, you are convinced in your heart, you know, your life is not where it's supposed to be. You want to change. And some of you, maybe you have been Christians and you've been going to church. Uh, 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 following other people to church and calling yourself Christians but you have never accepted him as your Lord and Savior. You have never asked him to come into your life and save your soul. And some of you, maybe you have asked him to come into your life and save your soul but you have never uh, 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 you, have, you have not been consistent in your salvation. Sometimes you are okay, sometimes you go back into the world, you go back into the old life I'm talking to you also. You can pray this prayer today. It's a prayer of salvation. We can just lift up our hands right now. Just lift up your right hand and put your other hand. This is not the law, but this is just to, to, to show a heart of surrender to God. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, I come before you. I confess all my sins. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive me. Make me a child of God. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me clean. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. From today, Holy Spirit, I welcome you into my life. Fill me with power from on high. Be my helper, be my teacher, be my guider, and be my friend. Thank you, Father, for writing my name in the book of life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I accept you as my Savior. I believe that you are the Son of God, you came, you died, you rose again, and you are sitting in the right hand power of God. I thank you, my Lord and my Savior, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. That is one prayer that you have prayed, and I want to tell you right now that this is the beginning of serendipity in your life. This is the beginning of greater things to happen in your life beginning of miracles, beginning of breakthroughs in your life because you accepted him as your Lord and your Savior and Jesus will never let you down in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Now, I want to encourage you that you can communicate with our pastoral team. Uh, uh, the numbers will be on the screen. 
where you can communicate if you are depressed and you have got uh, issues and you need counseling, you need prayer, you can communicate with us and we can get back to you. Uh, sometimes you can even WhatsApp if it, you, 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 you are far away and you can't call, WhatsApp will get back to you. We've got a very uh, nice turnaround time of communicating with people all over the world and God will surely bless you. If you are not uh, uh, here in, in, in Houghton or in Johannesburg, uh, uh, you are far away from us. Now, I want to encourage you, find a good Bible teaching church. Hear the word. Good Bible teaching church. Which is root, church which is rooted on the word of God. And God will surely bless you. Amen. Glory to God. God bless you.